afternoon. Today is the 25th of June and this is the London Classic Car Show at Sion Park uh, in Isleworth. This is the second part um, that I've made. The first part, uh, well, it's went over the half hour mark, which is where I like to kind of curtail um, each video for the Shambolic Shuffles. And so uh, we are now on part two. If you haven't watched part one, then uh, you know if you'd like to go back and watch it, I'll leave a link to the description below. So, because these are the slightly shambolic shuffles, if there is wind noise, if I get interrupted by announcements, if I fall over whilst I'm filming, and if I get information wrong, then uh, I just apologise. That's just the way that it goes on this channel. So we're at the um, Sunbeam Tiger Club. Sunbeam Tiger was a version of the uh, uh, Sunbeam Alpine. It's sort of later years. This is a uh, 67 car. There's a little friend on the bonnet. He looks a bit surprised, actually. He looks quite surprised he's here and all people are watching him. That's probably what's happening. But rather than uh, the 1725 CC engine that should be in this, it was an Alpine. It's got a Ford V8 under the bonnet, and hence it's called a Tiger. There we go. Yeah, Sunbeam Tigers. But we can, this is a slightly early car, this is a 60, uh, 65, I think. Have a look at that Ford engine in there. Problem was when, yeah, 65. Problem was when uh, the Roots Group, who made the um, Alpines and Tigers, was taken over by Chrysler at 67, they found they had a Ford engine in there. And they stopped selling these cars quite quickly. This sort of helped as well that there was a a new design of Alpine on the way, but sadly the Tiger was no more. But we've still got these here, which is nice. Just come across one of the uh, screen used Herbies from the, um, from the Love Bug. This is 63 Volkswagen. As you can see, there's a whole lot of information here that they actually had seven different Beatles for the Love Bug. This is the second one. It has a Porsche engine in it. Uh, there was no official sponsorship by Volkswagen at the time, so I don't think they even referred to it as, as uh, it's bad if I could avoid it. Sunroof sedan, of course. Must be worth a fortune. That's just one of the screen used ones. This is a 67 Volkswagen 1500. Of course, some of the original uh, Type 1 Beatles. They're not called Beetle anywhere on them, they're just referred to by the engine size mainly, or sometimes called the Super Beetle in the 70s ones, but this is a very, very early one. I think this is uh, early 50s. Now the very, very, very early Beetles have a have like a window that's in, um, in two parts, but this one doesn't. And you can see that these two have a bigger rear window. That's fixed under by Volkswagen uh, Type 1 knowledge, I'm afraid, viewers. That's pretty bad. Ooh, Chesil Speedster. Fully built cars from £37,000 or a kit based on a, a uh, Beetle chassis. Well, I suppose it you know, a 356 kind of was anyway. It's not the original 356 because it does say Chesil on the front. Uh, 74, 75 car would have made it itself for this. And there we go, it looks quite nice in there actually. I think there's some more nice things over there. You know, I'd like to go um, into uh, the auctions and uh, stuff like that, but I don't really want to have to buy a catalogue. Uh, yeah, it's £10 to go in. And um, yeah, I don't think I've got time to film all this stuff in here, I'm afraid, viewers. I do apologise. Plenty more over here. One car from the auction that is that is here is an 1982 Fiat 124 Spider 2000. It's a very very late one. I think they finished production about 1984. By the end of it, they were only being made on left-hand drive. I think, um, I think they were made pretty much exclusively for the American market. So yes, uh, 82 plate on this one. And we've got these big 
rear lights, which I think are off, so like a Fiat 131, but I could be completely wrong about that. Anyway, let's uh, continue over here and look at this enormous Rolls Royce Silver Cloud. This is a uh, 1958 Rolls Royce Silver Cloud 1. The uh, 3s had uh, different headlamps, it had quad headlamps. It's for sale, there we are. 35,000 miles from you. I've got a green lever. Oh! I wish, uh, wish um, it was possible to capture the smell of this car. But unfortunately, it isn't the smell of this and the wood dashboard. And mm, 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 mm. very nice, very very nice indeed. Uh, I don't know what this modern SLK is doing here, particularly as it's got a forbidden fuel engine, so we can't talk about that on the channel anyway. We can now talk about this uh, 1985 Ferrari Mondial QV which uh, has a beige leather interior. I do like a nice beige leather interior, viewers. I don't know if this is quite me, though, in this colour. I think it's a little a bit too sort of mm, unsubtle, perhaps. We do have a nice uh, MGB here, though. This is a 75 or later though, if it would be on probably actually it's 75 only because that was the first year of them. And it's the 74 75 plate, so I'm going to say it's 75, which it is. Uh, MGB GT Jubilee. With a very nice, tasteful shade of green, gold stripe, and gold wheels. And there we are, it is, it is for sale. There is the plug hole of the spare, as some people call it. Ooh, a Triumph. It's the Herald 1360. Very nice. Very easy car to uh, take apart. You just take the whole bit off. You can take the doors off, take the boot off of any of. It's not a huge amount left, really, to sort of do. Just so accessibility on these cars is ex extraordinary. This is a very, very late one. The '71, so last year of last year of production for these. Wow! So you've done 22,000 miles, fully recommissioned. Very nice. Just like this. Uh, Lancia Flavia Coupe from 1963. There we go, A plate, 63. Oxford plate on this. Mm. Only three of these apparently recorded in this country. Oh, well, viewers, it's going to be a difficult show for me, I know that. There's too many tasty things around. Like this. 1977 Jaguar XJ C4.2. Now this looks sort of similar to the one that's in the New Avengers. It's the same colour actually, but that was a completely modified example by a company called Broadspeed, and that was a V12. This is uh, just a, a 4.2 six-cylinder, but nevertheless, look at the little details of the wiper stalk there, and it tells you how to you know, start the ignition and things. It's interesting. It's not actually a leather interior, it's just a law interior, but it's beige and it's dark green. And I really quite like it. That's very, very nice views. And uh, fortunately, it's also for sale. I'm going to have to walk away from that one very quickly, otherwise, we're going to have problems. Uh, 54 MGTF, apparently very competitive for price at £28,500. Ooh, Daimler V8 250. Yeah, 65. I didn't realise these had gone up in value so much. This one is it looks virtually perfect though, so maybe that's why. Um, yeah. Daimler Grill, not a Mark II Jaguar, although it looks like one. Daimler's own engine designed by a chap called Edward Turner. And then we have this uh, 
1990 Rolls Royce Silver Spirit 2. It's a music I have in value too, because time was you could get one of these for, I don't know, five grand or something. It's not quite my sort of colour scheme, but nevertheless, it's rather nice. Hurst Park Classic Cars have uh, turned up and provided me with some rather nice tasty treats. This is a 1998 Jaguar XJR fully just supercharged. It's a bit faster than the uh, XJ6 I drove on Central Pacific Land Classics quite recently. This is X308 as well, which uh, um, is, is different. I think this is the changeover year for them actually, 98. Ooh, that looks a bit like a Mini Cooper, isn't it? Mini Cooper? It is. It's lost in Mini Cooper Mark 1. Oh, I should be really oh, 30,000 pounds. Mr. Bill from Wells Wheels has better get, uh, get saving one of these if he wants them. There we go. Speedometer in the middle, obviously, where they put a pole through the car to sort of turn it to make it used to paint. Very nice. Uh, XJ40. Three point six. It's an eighty-eight gans for sale. And Mark II three point four DU. So that might actually have been supplied originally by the by the factory. Oh, I do apologize. It is a it's a Mark it's a Mark One. Breaking my own rules. I'm getting too excited. Mike Hawthorne tribute car. I can't remember what colour Mike Hawthorne's one was. It um, fortunately met an end on the Guildford bypass in 1959 and he got killed in the accident, so it's a bit of a shame, but uh, yes, that one is dark green, it's very nice, and I sort of want a nice dark green car. Early uh, Pagoda SL, 67 plate, Southampton registration actually on this. 230SL auto. Most of them wear autos. I'm going around the show, you've seen part one that we've been doing. I've seen a couple of these, and most of them are auto. Check your XJS. Oh, viewers. It's dark green in a beige leather interior. Because, of course, it is. It's just here to, just here to taunt me and make me want to try to buy it. Where are you now? 1994 XJS 4 litre. R125 SL320 1994. Jaguar XK140 from 1956. Smith snip at £125,000. It's left hand drive as well. Ferrari F50 Maranello. Fans, of course, of uh, the JM on Cars channel will, I'm sure, appreciate these. Uh, 98. Well, I sell a few, um, it's 97. It's R. Only 32,000 miles. Now, this is an XJ6 Series 3. I believe these are really cheap. So they've gone up a bit since then. Original plate from um, East Anglia. Supplied by Manning Egerton in Lowestoft. It's 80, 82 on an X. And of course, I think these are twin fuel tanks. Yeah, twin fuel tanks on this. It's not the best fuel consumption ever. But lovely nevertheless. 1966 MG Midget Mark II, the 1100cc engine. Oh, 1958 AC Ace Bristol. These are what the AC 
Cobra was actually based on. I think it's called a Bristol because of the uh, the engine, which is not a V8. <laughs> Now this, I think, is a V8 because it's Jetson FF. I don't know what uh, year that is. It's very nice anyway. I like those. Wow. 2012 AC Coupe Zagato prototype. Fortunately, so m many attempts to get AC off the ground, it never worked. Next to something that looks about as Ian Seabrook from Hubnut as Ian Seabrook from Hubnut gets. I can't remember what they called these uh, these very early 2CV vans. I mean, if you look at the side of these, you can see it's got, got the hammock style seats in it and things. It's not really my cup of tea, this sort of thing, but I know a lot of you do find that sort of thing exciting. This is a uh, Porsche 386 Speeder, bottom of the chassis of a Porsche 986 Boxster. You've even got sort of wood and things on the back of this. But the interior is clearly, clearly Boxster, uh, so it'd be about 2004, this. There we go. This, I think, is a panther. But look at the length of this body. It's not a bonnet. You, you don't need anything this long, but of course, if you want a, a Panther Royale double six, then you want it to look like this, and this is what they look like. Uh, 73 74 plate on this, um, made I think in Weybridge, and using the doors from an Austin 1100 or other sort of BMC Land Crab. Uh, Jaguar engine and transmission. I think those are actually Willis, which have probably been replaced uh, later on as well. I don't actually think £65,000 is too much for one of these. They're probably very, very rare, the Royals. Extraordinary rare cars. There we go, and of course, like it, like in a lot of these Jaguars, there is a fuel for the cap. Let's go in now, uh, let's go in here. Ooh, Jaguar Land Rover Classic. I think that's an XK120. See if the screen will tell me. Yeah, 1950 SK120, but you can't really see that. Uh, oh, it's Range Rover, this will be a very early one. It's L registration, so 72, 73 plate. 73. There we go, original interior with maybe uh, just chuck a hose in there. No leather or anything like that. Reminds you of the one that Patrick McNee drove in the New Avengers. I think it was a similar colour to this, or maybe not exactly the same. That was a very early one on the J plate. This one's obviously had a bit of a bit of action. There is some patina on things. But yes, this will be worth a fair bit of money now. Wow. I don't think I've ever seen the, um, the interior of one of these really early ones before. That rev counter might even be aftermarket, I'm not sure. Maybe it's standard, I, I don't know. But yeah, it's genuinely just shove a hose in there. Very nice. Lots and lots and lots of uh, tasty sports cars. This would be a GT40 replica. 2011 plate on that. Uh, AC cab replica, it's a 86, 87 plate. Porsche 356 Speedster replica. 73, 74 plate. This could be based on a Beetle. Just loads of the sort of same kind of thing. Jaguar XKSS replica. 4.2 Jaguar engine, so not too far off, I suppose. Probably the Moss gearbox as well. What's this little chappy here? C type, is this a replica? Yes. Sort of, yeah. It's only got 1100 miles on the clock. Ooh, an Alfa Romeo. <laughs> Very nice. 1964 Alfa Romeo 
2600 spider. Do not touch. Okay, it won't touch, no problem. If I get my camera inside though. Ooh, I've heard of these, but never actually seen one up close. I saw one of these on the way back from the Festival of Speed, a Goodwood once. This is a 1991 Range Rover CSK, which uh, uses the three-door body shell, but I think it's sort of got a production mainly then. At CSK, uh, Charles Spencer King, I think these were different wheels as well that these had, for special edition. Very interesting. Bristol 2 litre, I think this is a, is a 402 or something like that, 404. That's why I get so confused with Bristol's. There's so many different type of you know, model codes, but yeah, they all just say 2 litre on the back. So see here, another, another retype. That is a Series 3. Ooh, what's that? Some kind of, it's, a, it's a Bentley, it's um, probably an R-Type, but it's been modified quite extensively. We saw um, 190 SL a bit earlier on, and now we've got a 300 SL Goldwing. These are sort of million pound cars, so I won't be getting in or touching anything like that. Fuel injection as well, one of the first cars to have fuel injection. This one, I think, is a 190, it's right hand drive, yep. It's an unrestored one. I don't know what year it is. You could use that though, it's not too bad. Could not have banged my head on the, on the door. Another 190 SL, this is a, a left hand drive one. This one's been restored. Ooh, it's blue leather this time. Wow, that's nice. Very, very nice. Some tasty treats here for certain. Past enough of the types, I think that's another rack. We'll go around the back of here. I think that's a Daimler. Double six coupe. Yes, and of course. It's dark green with beige leather interior. Ooh, that's lovely. I think really, actually, if, if John Steed didn't be able to choose his own car in the new Avengers, he probably would have chosen one of these as opposed to the broad speed, but it doesn't really fit his character very well. It would have probably been a Daimler. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, viewers. I think I was asked to pick a favorite car in the show I think this is probably going to be it, although working on that engine, it's not going to be me. Here is a fully electric QCV with one of the later ones. Yeah, throwing the engine away. I don't know whether that makes the Ian Seabrook fans happy or sad, really. Um, he loves electric cars himself, but maybe he likes that clattering 602cc engine. See if there are any batteries in the boot. Oh yeah, that's all right. Series three E-Type. A lot of E-Types today. 73, 74 plates. Very nice. Series one E-Type. I think that's a... Uh, 68 Dodge Charger, like the one in Bullet. Oh, I think we need a picture of this. A Fiat 130 Coupe. I know somebody who absolutely adores these, and his name is Mr. Colden. Yes, 1972 Fiat 130 Coupe. These are seriously rare and very, very nice indeed. Let's take a photograph of that in video, which I can do with this phone. There we go. Lovely. Another lovely car. An 85 BMW M635 CSI. 
wenn das Steil Puch. Yes, it is. It is a Steil Puch. It's the uh, Austrian relative of the uh, of the Fiat 500. What year is that? It's 1962. And then Tasty Ferrari. The Magnum one, I think. It's the 308. Citroen DS 1972. Now Electronic. See the electric conversion section here. Again, maybe one for the fans of Mr. Seabrook from Hubnut. This old Land Rover, I think this is a Series 3. Probably the kind of thing that people from um, Harry's Garage would be interested in. Oh no, sorry, it's a Series 2A. Should look at the front of it first because the um, the um, the headlamps are actually in board of the wings. Um, only the very late or American spec Series 2 A's like that. I've seen this before actually. This is at Autosport International in 2020. I actually saw this. Um, Mr. Quirk on it also is quite a fan of that. Oh wow! Toyota 2000 GT. Wow, as a new and live twice, I've never seen one of these before. Never in my life, I think they like a million pounds these cars. B67, something like that, I think. One of them that used in You Only Live Twice actually had the roof cut off because Sean Connery was too big to fit inside it. Very late uh, Porsche 356, 360, 64, that's been converted, as is the 1970 Carmen gear. E-types are uh, sort of ripe for that sort of thing because they have such a long, lot of area under the front that you can fit a very big motor and battery in there, as you can with this old Morgan. What year is this Morgan? 5744. Originally uh, sidebar ended out of Ford Anglia. It's not no longer one of those now, though. And Rolls Royce saw the ghost, I think, one of these. I don't know what year that is, 1911 it says there. Sort of thing that you find in Bewley. Interesting. So, more Series 3 Jaguar E types. 72 73 plate. Ah, it's more like it. A Rover P5B. I think this is Bieber Coupe. That's a 68 69 plate. And of course, it's dark blue with a beige leather interior. Why are these things always so tempting with dark blue and a beige leather interior? Yeah, so coupe style. Absolutely beautiful. Can I have one, please? Right, next area. Well, viewers, we've got even more tasty treats out here, including this, uh, I think it's a fiberglass Citroen Bijou. These were made um, in Citroen Slough Factory uh, under the underpinnings, on the underpinnings of a 2CV, this is a 61, and they just weren't successful. They were absolutely a utterly sort of a disaster, which uh, is a bit of a shame. Um, this one has survived. They only made about 200 of them. From 19... 59 and 1964. Yeah, this Lancia Flavia convertible. I do like this very much. Very, very, very nice. 64 Lancia Flavia by Vignale. Ooh, and the next door there's a, I think they call this Mercedes. I'd like to say, the CL600. There we go, some of the signs helps me out with things like this. It's 97, Miss Snip at £23,000. Another R107 Mercedes SL, there should be a lot of them here today. That's, uh, I think, um, 86, 87. ACA Seer, I think this one is. 
Yeah, ACAC, 1960. Fall over anything, almost fell over there. I think that's pretty registered by AC cars themselves, because they were in Thames, didn't in Surrey. Mark 1, Ford Escort, RS 1600. TW, so that might actually be a, a, a Ford um, fleet plate, or maybe it's just from this dealership here. I'm not even sure they're around anymore. Yes, worth a lot of money now, these, uh, these Mark 1 Escorts, worth a lot of money. Yes, there we go. An awful lot of money, 71 RS1600. Ford Jaguar XK 120 SE. He's a. Well, it is immaculate. It's very, very, very nice. Mercedes. Goda, but actually, this is the Brabus Classic 280 SL from 1969. Never seen one of these before. Neither have I ever seen in real life. A Monte Verde. 1970 Monteverdi 375L. Monteverdis were very, very rare and very, very, very expensive. I've never seen one of these in real life before. And I do like that rather a lot, rather tasty. And the very late SK150 S 3.4 Roadster. And a few German delights in here. Probably principally for Mr. Quirk upon it also. Adi All Quattro, Mark II Golf GTI, with the big bumpers, and an E34 5 Series as well. Five, 525SE. Very nice. Ooh, very nice. 1992 Aston Martin. We ride 6.3 wide body. Even got original plates on it. Uh, yes. Uh, Newport Pagnall. These were made at. Let's see if you've got the uh, Mark II Scirocco rear lights. Yes, we have. Mark II Volkswagen Scirocco rear lights. Ford RS200 with a few uh, Sierra bits on it. Obviously, not very sort of Sierra like performance though. Rather faster than most of the Sierras. You can just notice how much these are worth now. An awful lot of money. Maserati Ghibli Cup from imagine mid mid 90s, yeah, 1996. Maserati Ghibli 2. And of course we've got an F40 here, um, but we're not really into supercars on my channel, so we'll just go straight past and have a look at this Alfa Romeo SL instead. I think these are made of fiberglass, so I shouldn't touch it, so I won't do that, but I think James Martin on one of these on his channel. El Monster, all they used to call these. Yeah, it's a 1990, so it's an early one of these. Uh, Busso engine, I think based on the 75, actually, these. And then... Um, 2003 Bentley Continental R Mullen in the final series. It's one of the last cars to be built on the, on, the, on the platform, but I think dated back to the Rolls Royce Silver Shadow, as far as I remember. And of course, we will end this video because it's been going on for far too long on this uh, Lancia Delta HF Integrale. And this is the Devolution 1 from 1992. And I think the probably most appropriate colour for these, which is this yellow. So there we are, viewers. That's uh, part two of a slightly shambolic shuffle around London Classic Car Show. Unfortunately, we've uh, run out of um, time for this part, so we're going to have to go into the third part. But maybe that's uh, what you all like. So there we go. Thank you ever so much indeed for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, if you haven't already done so. If you like this video, leave a comment below. Social media links are down below. And I'll see you again in part three.